Welcome back to New Bay Northwest. Just like your health, your fertility can be affected by your lifestyle choices, but most of the lifestyle issues you've read about on the internet or here through the grapevine are not proven to be bad for your fertility. So today, Dr. Paul Dudley from Seattle Reproductive Medicine is here to help us sort through the facts. Welcome. <laughs> it's good to know what's true and what's not true because there's a lot of stuff that just goes around and people don't know for sure if it's right or wrong. So let's talk about one that is commonly spoken of smoking. Yeah, so smoking, the thing about smoking is that um, it's uh, quite prevalent. Uh, fortunately, not as much in the, as it has been in the past, but um, it, as a result, there's a tremendous amount of data that's out there. It's what's, uh, what are termed observational studies, where mm -hmm. you've looked at individuals who are smokers, individuals who are non-smokers, and the compared outcomes. And because of the total volume of data, you can say with a very high degree of certainty that it affects fertility both in females and in men, and particularly um, in women who are pregnant. Okay, so if you stop smoking, will that improve your fertility right away, or has the smoking you've done already damaged your fertility? So that's a little bit more complex question and a, and a little bit more nuanced answer. The, the, will, it, will it diminish your, or will it, will it shorten the time to conception immediately? Maybe, maybe not. You know, that's something that's uh, really difficult to quantify. You have to look at really large numbers of individuals to detect a difference. But um, it does appear in large-scale studies that the time to pregnancy does appear to be reduced in women who de discontinue uh, smoking. And okay. All right. Obesity. What about being obese or extremely underweight? Does that affect fertility? Yeah. In both instances, yes. And, and it has. We're we're talking about extremes uh, extremes of uh, body weight here. So we're not talking about individuals who are at or near um, ideal body weight, or even who are close to near near body weight. We're talking about individuals who are markedly. Uh, we actually define this based on what's termed a body mass index. Yes, so this the is a ratio. It's a ratio of your weight to your height. And if you look at women who are less than about a BMI of 19 or women who are in the uh, obese category, they both appear to have um, adverse outcomes with respect to fertility. In each instance, it actually, the, the key really is um, what we refer to as anovulation. In both circumstances, they're more prone, uh, statistically speaking, to um, fail to release an egg every month. And that is what translates into, um, into a reduced fecundity per month. Okay. Now, tell me about these fairly quickly. I'm going to run through the, the list. We've heard about lifestyle issues having an effect on, on fertility. Marijuana and other illegal drugs, true or not true? Um, well, it's true to an extent. And certainly individuals who are kind of partaking in illegal drug use should not, uh, should discontinue that immediately. For a lot for, of reasons. Right, for both reasons um, of, with respect to getting pregnant, but also the fact that once the baby's born, you got to raise it, and that's right. not necessarily the best environment to do it in. But um, the, those studies are really harder. They're more limited, and it's mainly because they're, by definition, illegal substances. Right, right. So you're, you're relying on sort of self-reporting, relying on small-scale studies, um, to date, uh, both um, now obstetric risks are a little bit better quantified. Um, so certainly with respect to marijuana, cocaine, and other hard drugs, those are, have a very a well-documented adverse effect on obstetric risk. In guys, um, in guys things like uh, marijuana use, um, that is uh, a little bit harder to quantify. It appears to diminish sperm parameters to a, to a certain degree. Whether that translates into reduced fertility is a little bit harder to say. Okay. And then quickly, these two, caffeine and stress. Yeah, caffeine is something, I mean, uh, this being uh, uh, Seattle, I don't want to necessarily offend one of our local employers, but caffeine in excess, um, greater than about two to three cups a day, does appear to um, increase risk of spontaneous abortion. And um, this is something that um, all women now, moderate intakes of one to two caffeinated beverages, it, it's hard to... It's hard to both say with any degree of certainty whether it affects fertility, but then also for obstetric risk, there's just not the data to say that you know moderate intake of one, you know, one to two caffeinated beverages per day really has much of an effect at all. Um, with that said, that you, that shouldn't be taken as a license to go out and you know throw down a couple of rock stars, you know, when you're pregnant. But um, <laughs> or any but, other time. And, right. and what about stress? Stress is stress is a bit of a black box, and it's something that we get asked about quite frequently. Generally speaking, stress, if you're stressed to the point that it's impacting your ability to conceive, you are not ovulating. That is the mechanism of action that it, that it, um, that through which it works. Um, what happens is stress, kind of the uh, initial, you have this high, very high stressor. It causes um, a series of stress-related stress hormones that are released in your brain. They impact the axis between your brain, your pituitary gland, and your ovary in the case of women. Guys, too, though. 
um, this is potentially a factor. Um, you and uh, as a result, it disrupts that very fine balance that's required for you to release an egg every month. And most of these people know who they are. You know, they're they're failing to have regular monthly menstrual cycles along in there. And, and if that's the case, then they should certainly consult their doctor because there's some very serious consequences. Even if they're not trying to get pregnant, there's consequences for their Absolutely. health in general for it. Okay, Dr. Dudley, thank you. And I know just suffering infertility is pretty stressful. So in any case, Seattle Reproductive Medicine can help you find out more about your own fertility through a fertility assessment. It can be very important. You can contact them by visiting our website, king5.com slash newday, and we'll link you straight over. When we come back, gadget guru Steve Greenberg is here with gift ideas sure to please dads and grads. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you.